Hey, welcome to another video. Um, so uh, earlier on this week, I feel like two, uh, two days ago, I asked you guys once again what you want to see this week and a lot of people mentioned corsets and jumpsuits. So this video is a combination of both, okay? How to make corsets with jumps. I think one comment um, actually said I want to learn how to make a corset jumpsuit. Um, so yeah, this is a combination between corsets and jumpsuits. If you like the video, don't forget to give this video a like and sometime next week I'm going to um, drop a community post asking you what you want to see next week. So if you have anything you want to see next week, be sure to check the channel and look out for a community post asking you what you want to see that week because who knows, you might drop a comment and I just might make it. Alright, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, don't forget to like, share this video with the person that you feel might um, be interested in uh, learning how to make a corset um, that's also a jumpsuit. Do have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Alright, so welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a corset jumpsuit like you've seen already. Um, so, the first part we're going to start working on is the top part of the corset before we move on to the bottom half. So, the first step is to draft a bodice. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go ahead to draft um, my bodice. And when I'm done with drafting the bodice, I'm going to come back so that I show you how you can extract your corset from a bodice. If you don't know how to draft a bodice, a link to how to draft a bodice is going to be in the description box, so make sure to check that out. Alright, so here I've drafted my bodice. Let me run you through everything. Yes, so here is my shoulder measurement, so that's 7 inches, uh, 14 inches divided by 2, 7, place that here. Slope my shoulder by 1 inch. Though we are not working, we don't need your armhole measurements because the bust line is where the edge, that's the top edge of the, um, of the corset is going to be. That's the top part of the jumpsuit. This is the bust, uh, that's a 3 divided by uh, 4, it gives us uh, 8.25, that's what we placed here. This is the underbust round, this is the half cut, so 2 inches after the underbust length. This line here, the distance from the shoulder to the belly button, where we place the waist. The waist is 27, 27 divided by 4 gives us 6.75, so that's what we have over here. Alright, so after you've drafted your bodice, the next part is you're going to need, for this um, corset we're using a bra cup, you're going to come just half an inch away from the shoulder, so half an inch away from the shoulder, you make a mark, and before we start placing our bra cup, I want you to place half an inch at the top of here. This half an inch will serve as our sewing allowance, so half inch on top of here, and half inch after, so that we don't forget. Alright, so half inch after here, you're going to come and place a bra cup, your bra cup, okay? So you get a bra cup to match the bust size that you're working with, and then you want to try and place it right on the edge and as close to the under bust line as possible. So make sure it touches the edge, the edge here is touching the line on this side, and it's close to it, even if it doesn't sit exactly on the under bust line, but even if it's just um, a few millimeters away, that's still fine. Then, you're going to make a curve. Alright, this is a pretty easy corset top. If you want to have a corset with all the 1 million cuts on it, I have made videos on how to draft Victorian style corsets. So, if you want, you can cut the top part of the corset using one of the previous videos I've made. I will link a basque waistline Victorian style corset in the description. You can cut that part here as the top, but following the design of how the jumps of how my wife wants the jumpsuit to look, this is all pretty much all we're going to um, need to do. The only thing we will do is we're going to cut a line down the middle here, but that line is pretty much decorative, alright? So we're going to just draw a line here straight down, and then we're going to add it back on our fabric. So what you're going to do is you're going to place 4 inches away from the edge and make a mark, roll the line from here down. Add your regular allowance on the side. So whatever allowance you are used to working with, simply add it on the side. For me, that's one and a half inches, so I'm going to add one and a half inches everywhere. One and a half inch here, one and a half inch here, here, and here. And then, I'm going to simply connect them together. The next thing you're going to do is we're going to fold our pattern paper. So, we're going to use this pattern that we have to cut front and back at the same time. Alright? 
after you've made a fold like i have done you're going to come to the front here and you're going to place your zipper allowance i usually place two inches when you're cutting the back part because now we're cutting the front and the back at the same time but the back has a little, little slight change when you're comparing it with the front what we're going to do is this you're going to come to the edge if you have a different marker so that a different color of marker let me try my green see if it will work hope that this works you're going to come to the edge here mark one okay it did mark one and then here you're going to mark half an inch the reason why we're placing this line here this line does not affect the front this line is for the back. The back we're going to place a dart. So I'm keeping the allowance that we're going to need for the back dart before we put our scissors. And then at this four inch, I want you to make a notch. And then when you're done with that, since you've divided both of them at this point, you can cut off here. On the front because we don't need this part here on the front now the reason why we added that one inch to the back that's this one inch that we've cut out of the front that i said we won't need for the front but we need for the back is because at the back here we're going to place a dart so the back is going to have a dart running from the top all the way down okay so it's like a half inch you're going to hold half an inch so by the time you hold half half you will consume the one inch and then the pattern will look exactly like the front but the last change we need to make to the pattern that is meant for the back is over at the edge here we are going to come up by one inch this is to take away any excess that we would have or that we would be worried about at the bottom of our zipper all right so that's um that's um, a problem where when you fix a zipper the zipper scallops all right this is going to eliminate that issue before it happens let me make a notch again to remind myself where the notch should be when it's time to start cutting so with this pattern we have drafted the pattern for the back keep this aside now we're working with the front for the front the difference we're going to have is when you're cutting this line you see this part here I'm not cutting exactly on the line I'm cutting half inch above that's going to be our allowance for stitching on the back up going to cut the line here to separate them also because we've made a cut there that I said this is just going to be a decorative cut make sure to add half inch here when you're transferring this to your fabric all right so let's move on to the bra cups the fabric that's supposed to cover the bra cups all right so before we go ahead to um, creating the um, the fabric that will cover the bra cup you're going to need to measure two things you're going to need to measure the width so start from here and measure across so the width I'm working with is 8.5 inches make sure to write that down and then you're going to need to measure the height and the height is 6 inches so width 8.5 height 6 inches make sure to measure that all right so time to cut the bra cup this is going to be nice and easy first thing you want to do get a small piece of paper like this and then close to the edge maybe like one and a half inches away from the edge of the brown paper just simply roll the line from top to bottom next thing I want you to do is I'm going to keep one inch away from the top make a mark one inch away from the top of the edge of paper and then you're going to make a mark of that six inches that's the height of the back of six inches you're going to make a mark with it you are going to come down to two inches after this half inch but this is the top of it this is the bottom of the back of so two inches after the top you are going to make a mark there and then simply roll the line in and then the next thing you are going to do, you are going to take the width. So remember that width of 8.5 um, inches. You are going to divide 8.5 inches into 2. That should give you 4.25. Alright. So you are going to take that 4.25 and you are going to make a mark. And then when you've done that, the next thing you are going to do is you are going to connect a line from here to here and here to the bottom. After you have done that, next thing we are going to do is we are going to come in at the top here. I am going to come in by half an inch and at the bottom I am going to come in by half an inch. And then 
you're going to really curl from here to here and down, all right? Now that that has been done, I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to add half inch at every point, all right? This pattern will be used to cut the four, um, um, the four pieces that we will need for our brack up, all right? So, let's move on to cutting the trouser part. All right, so um, these are the fabrics I'm going to use for the jumpsuit. This is going to be for the top part, the corset part. This black part is going to be for the jumpsuit part. And this black net you can see here is what I'm going to use for the decorative part on the bust. I have two yards of each, so two yards of this and two yards of this. This I just have a piece of. So let me go ahead to cutting. When I before I start cutting, I'm going to iron uh, SD, so soft woven uh, fusible interfacing, to the wrong side of my Ankara before I start cutting. So I'm going to iron that on uh, off camera, and then I'll simply place my patterns on top and cut. All right, so I've ironed on the SD onto my fabric, so I'm going to go ahead to cut this part. Now when I'm cutting this part here, this is the front. Edge, that's the middle of it all so you want it to be a folded edge so it must be it must be placed on an edge that's folded so that it comes out as one piece and this other one here it doesn't really matter we did it in two pieces so make sure this you place this close to the edge you can place this however you like um, yeah when I'm cutting I'll add half I'll add half an inch here for my sewing allowance please do not forget Alright, so now here is the back. I cut it in such a way that it gave me two pieces. I've also made the notch for the bottom half. So this is the back. The next thing is I'm going to cut the bust part. Remember, when you're cutting the bust part, you need to fold it twice so, so that you end up with four pieces. So I will fold the first time, place it on top and cut, and then I'll look for another place and I will fold again. Alright? Fold it again, place it, and cut. You want to end up with a total of four pieces. So, using these patterns, I'm going to go ahead to cut the lining exactly how I've cut the fabric. All right. When I'm done with that, I'll be back. When I'm cutting the lining, I'll iron um, non-woven, lightweight non-woven fusible interface into the lining before I cut just like how I ironed on my estate before I cut the fabric. Alright, so now it's time to cut the bottom half, alright? So the bottom half um, is going to, how you cut the bottom half, you subtract the cuts from the shoulder to the cuts, so that's 4,019 inches from the total length, which is 16 inches. So 16 inches minus 19, we're left with 41 inches. So from this waist to the hem of our jumpsuit should be 41 inches. Remember to add your sewing allowance to that length. So if you have 41 and you want to have a two and you, and you want to have two inches of hemming allowance, you're going to need to cut that at 43. All right, so the first part we're going to join is this is the center. We're going to join the sides to the center of the front, consuming half an inch because that's what we kept. Um, whatever we do to the fabric, so all the stitches we make on the fabric, make sure to replicate them on the lining. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my ironing table and I'm going to spread an iron here flat, alright, on both sides. After I do that, I'll be back. Okay, and then on the back, you can see this is the back here, we're going to need to hold our darts from top all the way down, consuming half an inch. So, half inch, half inch, we should end up uh, taking up that extra one inch we added on the side of the back when we are drafting. Alright, so I have joined both of here and I've ironed them. I've ironed it flat. Also, I have installed my darts on the back 
So the next thing is to join the back to the front, consuming the one and a half inch of allowance that we kept. Please take note of where your slope is heading up to know where your zipper allowance is supposed to face. All right. Um, yeah. So I'm going to join this, consuming one and a half, and then we'll move on from here. Be sure to iron this joining flat. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to join both sides of the bra up together at the front. That's where I made the notch to point the front. I'm going to join them together, consuming half an inch. Alright, so now we have two options. You can either head over to your ironing table, use um, a bustiac, um, a breast ball, tailor's ham to iron this flat and stitch on both sides. So, and stitch on here and here, or you can push the whole thing to one side and stitch it flat. So, you can do whatever you want at this point. Um, what am I going to do? I think I'm going to iron it on both sides. I'll be back. Let me iron it flat. So now the next thing we're going to do is you're going to take your back up, alright, and you're going to place it centrally inside here. Now you can see we have some excess. We are trying to trim it now. That's what we're doing. At the top and, the, and at the bottom, we don't have any excess, so it's fine. You can see it's half inch here and half inch here. But you place it centrally, and then you're going to come over here. You see this midline where we have the joining. We are going to try and stitch at the top and at the bottom to hold the back up in place, alright? So over here, you can see that I have um, the lining part of the of the um, fabric for the uh, bra cup. What you are going to do is you want to place it, you want to place them into one another like so. Then flatten everything, make sure that everything is nice and smooth. And if you have any excess, if you have any excess, you go ahead and trim it down like so. Come over to the other side. If you have any excess on the other side as well. Arrange everything it's just a little bit at the top, and then trim the side down as well. All right, now we have half an inch everywhere. Go ahead and build your lining as well. All right, go ahead and build your lining, and then we'll be back. All right, so what you can see here is the lining. Um, so I'm going to just simply go ahead and stitch in one side of the back hole. Whatever I do here. We are going to simply repeat the same thing on the other side, alright? Alright, so I have stitched it on and I've tried to iron it a bit to flatten it. So I'm now going to stitch around the back up just to hold my stitch in place. Alright, so the next step is to gather my net. For me, my net has a front side because it's a part that has some velvet, uh, the, the, the floral pattern you can see. Make it face up if you have a net that has um, a front. Now you see this rough edge I have here. You can, if you have an overlocker, you can finish it. If not, you're going to simply fold it out of the way. Okay, fold it inside like that. Make sure you have this side here facing up at all times. Then, what you want to do is you're going to take the side where you want to have the uh, the net coming from and you want to place it like I've done I'm going to start making my gathers half inch half inch away from from the beginning so you see here this part here will not be stitched on when I'm trying to make the gathers all right and please notice how I'm going to keep my um, I'm going to keep the whole thing straight Alright, I'm going to keep the whole thing straight while I make the gathers. I'm not going to bring this um, top part here and align it with here. Just watch and see how I'm doing this. Don't make the gathers so much because you want to be able to see the fabric through the nets.
All right, and then you can go ahead to cut the excess you have following the curve. Next part is to install the brackets. So I'm basically going to install this bracket just like we did um, on the lining. I'm going to start from the beginning here and I'm going to simply just stitch all the way around. Alright, so you see here, this part here, I'm going to take it from this side of the shoulder all the way across to the other side. Alright, I'm going to simply, as you can see, you can still see under here, you can still see what's going on under there, so that's also really important. Alright, um, so let me attach this other side and then we'll be back. Alright, so you can see that here we have... Um, a this part here so this part here is supposed to come up the neck and come to the other side of the back of the shoulder so you see this is the corresponding side of the back okay if we place it across like so here okay this side here is supposed to match with this back up and this side with the other back up but what we're doing is by taking this net coming across one side of as in coming across the opposite side of the um, shoulder all right and we're going to attach it right here okay so it's going to be something like this where it comes over the neck and then it's attached to one side of the back all right so i hope that's clear so this for this part here i would advise that you call the person in for a fitting or if you have a person with a similar body size you put it across the person's body and you pin it where it is supposed to be before you proceed for it to be very, very precise you don't have to do this twice Alright, so I'm going to go and put it on my wife, pin it in the right place, and I'll be back to show you how we stitch it on. Alright, so I've taken this from this side of the bust, across the neck, all the way to the other side of the back, and this is where we landed. I'm now going to flip it upside down, and I'm going to stitch, because this part here will be planted inside. So with that, I have stitched this part here on. You can see it's going from this side of the bust all the way to this other side of the back. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to now join the fabric and the lining together, consuming half an inch across the top. All right. Alright, so I'm now going to push all the excess towards the lining and I'm going to top stitch on the lining from here all the way down. Alright, so let me do that. And then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to simply turn the lining and fabric inside out and I'm going to stitch here from the bottom all the way to the top. Alright, after that it's time to move to the bottom part of the trouser, that's of the jumpsuit, sorry. Um, before you start stitching the bottom part at all, if you want this to be the neatest it can be, you would first need to use your overlocker and finish all the sides, all the edges of the front and the back before you start stitching. Okay, but with that out of the way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stitching from the top here all the way to the bottom. But before I get to the end of the curve that makes up the bottom, I'm going to stop like 1.5 inches before the end and I'm going to lock it there. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do in the front, just so that the front, the bottom part of the jumpsuit matches the top, I'm going to make a little dart from here, 5 inches low, as for the, as for the, the width of the dart, just half an inch, so you're taking away one inch. Alright, so now you just saw me fix the, um, trace my dart, what I'm going to, on, on the back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now join the front and the back on the side, consuming half an inch.
So, after I've joined this side, I'm going to repeat this step on this other side. I'm going to join the hip to here. That's basically what I just did. So, I'm going to do this and then I'll be back. Alright, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to join the waist of the trouser to the waist of the top parts to create a jumpsuit. I'm going to align my back darts with the darts at the back at all costs. And when I'm done making this switch, you, got, you can go ahead and use your overlocker to finish both of them together. But I'm not going to do that. But yeah, if you want this to be the neatest, you have to do that. Alright, after you have fixed this, the next step is to come to the bottom part of the back where you have the, where the zipper is supposed to go. You want to keep a space of at least 8 inches away from the joining, alright, so eight, inch, uh, 8 inches after. You are going to start to stitch from there and you will stop um, approximately 1.5 inches before you get to the end of the curve. After you've made that stitch, you're going to pick up one side, so like the front of the left and the back of the left, and you're going to bring them together and join them together on the inner side of the thigh from here all the way down. I'll repeat the same thing on the other side when I'm done. Alright, so here I have the hole that is left here. You simply just make a stitch across to hold it down. So from here, make a stitch across to here. And once you do that, you are done with this. So, now the last step is to simply install the zipper on both sides, consuming the 2 inches that we kept for our zipper allowance. After I do that, I'm basically done. And it's just to fix the zipper, I've done this in a lot of videos. Um, if you've watched this far, thank you for watching. After this, I'm done, so I'll see you in the next video.